Welcome to episode 37 of FTP Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. And yes, I'm pretty frustrated. Um, you may have noticed the episodes are being a bit a little bit slower lately. Um, that's not really anything to do with the amount of work that I'm putting into them. I'm putting the same amount. It's just taking an awful lot to get stuff done. Well, first of all, this nuclear reactor blew, so that, that wasn't a great weekend, <laughs> to be said. But... Um, Getting a lot of the stuff up and running requires a lot of um, long-running processes now. You know, things like resonant machines, uh, machine frames. Um, well, yeah, mainly those, actually. <laughs> but there's other ones as well. There's like the, um, no, what's it? Ugh. The resonant energy cells. The Enderium takes a while to, to make. Uh, literally last night I spent, I don't know, four hours, five hours, just without recording a thing just sorting stuff out so <laughs> so i kind of need to speed things up because i want to get back to, to my regular schedule um so yeah i'm gonna first thing i did was immediately to this morning i just thought you know this has to change i'm gonna put it onto a server so if everything's now running on a server even though i'm only playing single player um and this is where our servers running constantly so as you can see i've got my world anchor back um each ender pearl lasts 12 real-time hours so this is an easier solution than, say, um, the other one, which is the chunk loader. Chicken chunks isn't in here, so you've got to go for the Mine Factory Reloaded version, and that requires two Tesseracts, a resident energy cell, and red resident energy cell frame per chunk loader. I'm, to be honest, this stuff isn't all that hard these days, but still, yeah, this is just easier. <laughs> <laughs> for the moment. So what are we going to do today? Let's get on with actual stuff, because I get it get me out of the frustration. So you saw me set up the scrap system last episode. I did some more optimization of it just off camera. I'll just quickly explain that one. There are eight recyclers here. Um, and I have... This is fairly decent in terms of power efficiency. The absolute best here would be um, 24 of these recyclers. Um but with no overclocker upgrades. You see how that reduces the power, the, the, the process time to a third of normal, but it increases the power four times normal. So that means this isn't this isn't as power efficient as just using your recyclers without any overclocker upgrades. Every time you add that, you pay a penalty in, in power. However, this is pretty compact, so that's 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 the alternative. So yeah, if you wanted to make a wall of recyclers, you want probably about twelve per mass fab. I've put an extra mass fab in because it wasn't fast enough on one. So that second mass fab uh, is like another, so it'd be like four and four basically for this with three in each one is how I've set them up. So eight, eight recyclers with three overclock upgrades in each one. And just to optimize this a little bit more, I've just got this retriever pulling into a chest and the chest behind these uh, covers, which is the thermal dynamics covers, I haven't actually used them so far. Uh, I was just going to put it all in this line, but it turns out if you put these covers in place, I don't know any way of actually making a cover that will separate the two of these uh, item ducts. I'm so used to, with thermal expansion, separating these with covers now, that when I actually want to separate them with covers, nope, it's just going to say, hey, I'm too intelligent, I'm just going to make a hole through it. So, yeah, <laughs> not that much of a fan with those, because that used to be a utility I used to use. But I guess that's the smart. So if you don't want to use them to separate pipes, uh, ducts even, you can feel free to use them. So yeah, behind these, and I could remove them, um, is just uh, a servo that is using round robin to these two. And the reason why I'm not doing like without this chest in the middle is just a round robin from this to those two is actually pretty fast keeping them supplied. So you'll see that's 63, that's 64. Progress is going up. I had a couple of suggestions from commenters, uh, so I wanted to qu quickly go through a couple of those. Uh, one, one commenter was suggesting I use scrap boxes instead of scrap. That's absolutely fine. Uh, you can do that, and you can pass scrap boxes into the mass fab. The only downside, or well, not really downside, is that it doesn't really gain anything. It just has less storage requirements than, than scrap, because it's, it's like compacting a block. It's just nine scrap, and you get nine times the amount when you actually burn it through the mass fab. So... It, there's no real benefit there that, that I'm that I'm going to go for. Um, although if you're trying to do a really compact system, maybe you'd put that through. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see on that, that front. Um, yeah, so let's uh, move on from there. <laughs> 
I had, I had what I thought was a sneaky thought, and I've mentioned this earlier in the series. I thought, hmm, I'm going to make a radioactive thermoelectric generator, or an RTG generator. RTG. Yeah, G's the generator. Um, and in there, I will put pellets of RTG fuel, and it will make me power for free. Well, yes. And uh, I, I made this and thought, that's really not producing a lot of power. <laughs> Then I check the actual details, and it kind of turns out that if you put one in here, it's going to make one EU per tick. Two will make two, three will make four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So to get thirty-two, you need six of these pellets of RTG fuel. And yeah, I think I showed you last episode. If we want to make RTG fuel with the EU matter, that's a lot larger. Yeah, that's that's like eight times as much, I presume. Uh, close enough. Um, so, yeah. Not going to do that for now. However, this is actually filling up the replicator with UU matter from these two. The reactor is keeping up. And I've got 13 iridium ore out of that process so far. Still not terribly fast, but now that it's on a server... I don't care as much because I was, you know, I was waiting for four hours, uh, as I was saying last night, and it's like one <laughs> and two. Yeah, so it, it was taking a long time. So I'm just going to leave that running 24-7 and have that running in the background. I'm sorry if you are single player only and you haven't got a server running in the background. I'm even thinking of getting like a local server for home use, like a micro ATX, a little tiny server that will just run rather than renting one, but uh, either way, it, it's sortable. Now you may notice these ender chests in here, and let's briefly explain those. So what I've got is, uh, it's very quickly because these aren't terribly exciting, I've got one ender chest this side with with um, white, white, green, and this is my output. So in here, I just have quad fuel rod depleted, whitelist only, and make sure before you turn the redstone control that you set that to whitelist only. Otherwise, it will start dragging out pieces of your reactor. <laughs> and uh, yes, no good. No, no good. This side is green, white, white, and it's got quad fuel rods, uranium in it. Um, that's the only eight, though, so I should probably make more of those. Uh, so yeah, just to keep that going, but... I don't think I'm going to need it while I'm recording. Actually, I can do that later. What I did want to do today is actually automate that because, yeah, I've got the two ender chests. And I've got two on here as well. Exactly the same setup. Um, this side, by the way, just inputs those. Yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, it just inputs those, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't specifically need to set the whitelist on that one. I just did it on purpose just in case I put anything else in that inventory. So, now we need to automate them. So, what I've got is an ender chest, which is green, green, green. I'm intending to input to that from my logistics pipe system. I've also got white, white, green. That's my used up fuel rods. And the same thing on here, this is my unused one. So, if you like, this is my input, both the depleted and the new uranium and we can put it into this trivially and it will get us to the point where it dumps into this chest but that's not great i need to actually craft the things and get everything going so we're going to cover that this episode and that was an end of uh, some kind i'm not sure i saw particles then it wasn't just me going blind yeah so we need to stop doing this and start doing something auto crafting so you know we're going to get on with that let me just uh quickly check how many resonant cells we've got Five. No idea how long those two take to produce. So yeah, now that I can do it on a server, I'm much, 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 much happier. Um, right, before I go on to also crafting, a couple of quick things. Um, again, from commenters. We had a couple of commenters saying, uh, you, well, ah, first of all, yeah, let's, no, let's just head back down to the, uh, eh, head back down to the reactor you center. See, I've got another one of those now. Uh, this, I forgot to mention this. This is the resonant igneous extruder. Uh, instead of putting multiple, and yeah, I do actually have multiple still. Uh, whoops. Yeah, I started putting them down and I thought, wait a second, I don't want to keep producing these. 
So, uh, yeah, again, we got some commenters saying the same thing. Um, we can produce a resonant igneous extruder, and that was one of the reasons why I was waiting for those resonant machine frames. That's what you're going to need to make a resonant igneous extruder. When you first put it down, it's going to be exactly like a normal one. No difference. So don't get your hopes up. <laughs> so you, what you then need to do is fill it up. There's 32 buckets on each other side instead of four on this. So that makes it faster just by virtue of having them full, I believe. I haven't confirmed it, but it was trivial to fill them up. However, you then have this little tab here, and it has augments. These top three are filled by default. These bottom three, you need to fill the extrusion level one, level two, and level three. You have to fit the previous ones. They are relatively simple recipes. There's nothing amazing about them. Um, and once you have them, however, once you have all three, see, so the first one is just cobble around redstone, stone around pyrothium, and obsidian around cryothium. We've made all those before for the jetpacks, so I'm not going to cover them. Once you put them all in, you can't see it here, but what's actually happening is um, every cycle, and that's about a second and a half, two seconds, it's crafting a full stack of cobble. So all of these are permanently full. Or at least close enough to full that by the time they get just below 60, they'll get given another load of cobblestone. So I'm even I'm gonna probably gonna take those other igneous extruders off and uh, see if this continues to cope. It should do. I have no problems with it. So that's just one thing I wanted to cover. Uh, before I went upstairs and did the next thing, which is thermal monitors. Uh, I had a lot of sympathy from people saying, oh, sorry about your nuclear explosion, but there is a good way to solve that nuclear explosion. It's called thermal monitor. Now, before the thing explodes and basically melts down, this is from the nuclear control mod, you can make uh, a thermal monitor. Now, that's, uh, I've got some lead plates advanced circuits uh, let's just get a couple more of those made and you're missing signalum now oh why are you missing signalum oh, i need to see some redstone yes yeah, so while i'm actually just putting that through the system um a thermal monitor is basically attached to usually attached to a reactor there is one called a thermal uh remote oh, sorry a remote thermal monitor which can attach well is responsible for any nearby um, reactors. That, according to some forum posts, is a little bit buggy, so because I didn't want to have something buggy near a nuclear reactor, I thought, yeah, let's actually just do this uh, properly. So um, we do, we're do. we not going to go for the remote one. I don't want that buggy behavior. It's not, not good. Uh, it could have been fixed by these days, but yeah, just in case. Uh, yes, I know, I'm still doing this manually. <laughs> I shouldn't be at this stage. I need to automate Signalum, just like I automated Enderium, but uh, it'll do for now. I'm just dump it into the system. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I just want the one advanced circuit, and I've got a regular circuit. I need some lead plates, of which I need four more of those, so let's just order four more. They're already, already in the system, so that's not really an issue. Advanced circuits. I'm going to need two, although only one really to demonstrate, and uh, redstone. It's not like that's going to be, take any time. Uh, so where's my lead plates? There they are. And redstone, and then we just come back for the advanced circuit. So I will cover that a little bit later. We have got some of these ingredients in here, and I did want to cover those as well. Um, I have mentioned this in the previous in the series. It's called a molecular transformer. Um, the only part of this that you haven't seen, all of these you haven't seen, but they are just made up of these that you have and the common components, is this in the middle. And I made it rather than show you the crafting on camera because I know a lot of you don't really want to watch too much crafting, so that's by the by. <clears throat> They're made up of industrial uh, craft two components. Again, all stuff that you've seen before, plus irradiant glass panes, which you won't have. Made from reinforced glass, which you've seen before, but this requires irradiant uranium, which is uranium ingot and glowstone in assembly table. Not much power, thankfully. And this can be made directly from the ore or from crushing the ore into dust and then smelting it. Again, not too complex, but it is part of the advanced solar panels mod. 
And with those, we can then craft, or we will be able to craft, the molecular transformer. Let me just uh, actually create one of these, just so I can grab it and show you this. I haven't done this before off camera, so uh, just time for everything. So I'm going to attach it to the bottom here. There we go. And uh, I wonder if this is... I need a rev I need a way to reverse that, however. I wonder if I can do that in Reactor or not. Yeah. So if I take this down to say I this is this is a temperature. Well, I don't want my actual temperature. Ah, there we go. I think that's the redstone. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So let's just actually just knock this off and then I'll explain. Okay. That isn't working either way around. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's supposed to really be happening is this is this is harvest or this is checking the temperature of the reactor. And if it goes over a certain amount, it should emit a redstone signal. However, this isn't working because if this is way around, if this is redstone signal until it hits the temperature and then drops, that should be a redstone signal all the time, which should mean that I shouldn't need this lever. Um, so, can I set you to anything? Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that one. That should be working, but uh, it's not emitting a redstone signal because the reactor's not turning on. But it's basically a safety feature. It's a cutoff valve. So, if you go over a certain temperature, it stops the power to the reactor. But if I have to have a manual switch on it, that's not going to help because the manual switch is already causing the reactor to turn on. Unless there's a way of changing the reactor so that it reverses its response to redstone in that it's on by default and off when redstone goes into it. I will look into that. But that's the safety feature anyway, and uh, as long as I can actually figure out how to make sure that that is responding, then uh, we should be good. Uh, as it is, the reactors are designed properly now, so in my case it wasn't that um, the reactor's going to overheat, it was because I made it an actual manual mistake here and it overheated. Uh, so, yeah, my bad. I will figure out those and mention it later though, once I figure them out. And that's the wrong place. Okay, so automated system then. Um, right, so we're going to need to input our uranium whenever I put it into that into the system uh, so that should be straightforward uh, let's just, just grab this that's going to connect which is awkward uh, that's going to be really awkward in fact because I need to connect water into this one so yeah um, maybe I ensure that you only will accept there Let's just knock the wall through, shall we? Uh, yeah, I may need to put filters in place. Let me go and grab a few things. It does look a tad odd, I'll admit, but the issue with this thermal monitor was that it doesn't... It seems strange, you know, given that it's physically connected to it, but it doesn't actually transfer any redstone um, signal. It doesn't create its own, which is slightly annoying, um, because I then have to put this... This is um, redstone conduit. Uh, I tried the insulated kind that didn't work, so because it doesn't really connect to the reactor like insulated conduit does. So that's fine. Use the only insulated stuff. Set this to high low. I cut out when you hit ten. I presume this is just ten degrees. Uh, yeah, heat maximum. So this is going to cut it off when it gets to any kind of degrees really. Uh, at the moment, core temperature is zero. So if I were to low, lower this to zero. It will cut off. It's it's over. So it's one. <laughs> Even one will actually uh, will start the thing up. 
So yeah, just 10 or something really low because this reactor design does not need core temperature. There are reactor designs that do need core temperatures. Uh, they used to be called breeders, but they were in the old versions and I'm not sure the new version of IC2, this, this nuclear reactor is going to be building up quite <laughs> quite extensively now. But the uh, yeah, the, I'm not sure quite what the, the high temperature ones actually need. Um, I was hoping I wouldn't need to have a mechanism for switching them on and on, on, on and off after a certain time, you know, like a, a clock. Because that, that would be annoying because it, it's vulnerable to failure if it heats up general energy over time, then it will eventually explode. Whereas this is actually quite handy. It just triggers at a certain amount of heat and brings things on and off accordingly. So I am quite happy with that. And hopefully you guys are too. That will just guard against any nasty explosions. So here we are. Um, I'll go through this step by step with you. Hopefully you're not too intimidated by it. It's, by it. it's a very simple system, but you know we'll see. So, our, our uranium ore is going to come in here, and we're going to export it from our logistics pipe system. It'll get pulled, well, pushed, into the only place that can accept uranium, which uranium ore, which is the bass razor. That's going to eject it via the automatic ejection upgrade into the ore washing plant. There it goes. I'm going to put overclockers in these, don't worry. Just an example. That's going to get washed. And I don't know if you can see, the connected to the, the water still at the back, just behind there. Well, let's just go back here. Let's just knock these blocks out for a second. So I'm still connecting water in here. And now you'll see that this pipe is connected. Don't worry, that's not, uh, that's not going to be anything weird. It's just going to eject again wherever it can do. In this case, the uh, ejection is into this chest. So let's just head back there for a second. This chest has a retriever, so it's not really ejecting, it's more being pulled. To pull tiny piles of lead dust and stone dust. See? Getting pulled out of that. So we don't have to deal with those items, because they're kind of terrible. That thing gets passed on into our thermal centrifuge, which is heating up. Which is going to process the uranium ore. And which is then going to get pulled. Uh, I suppose we could do some shortening of this whole chain. It can be compacted. I'm just keeping everything nice and clear rather than making the tiniest machine possible. Um, so yeah, it's going to process, go into these two drawers. And these are locked to this type. This just serves as a buffer because if the quarry coming in could end up uh, the whole system can end up piling back. If we look in here at the moment, there's 19 quad fuel rods, and to be honest, the quad the quarry has like another 60 uranium to be um, to be processed. So eventually, this may back stuff. So having a buffer chest in the middle is a good idea. From there, we've then got another retriever, and um, this one has the maximum up, up here, the maximum number of total items in a attached inventory set to one stack. So it's only ever going to keep one stack of this and one stack of this. That's kind of an alternative to the other method, you know, the logistics pipes method I've shown you previously, where you can just specify like a supplier pipe. This just does it by T uh, thermal dynamics. I keep saying some like uh, expansion IETE, but it's TD now, I guess. So in here, um, the other way of doing it is, of course, filling this with cobblestone, which I've shown here, except that um, if this runs out exactly then it, uh, if you don't have this retriever in place, because this cobblestone will give you a solution without that retriever, you could push p like a normal servos. But if you run out exactly of this, it could try and push another one of these in if you didn't have anything controlling the number of stacks. So instead of that, use the retriever, and then we can get rid of this old method of just stuffing these things with cobblestone. Uh, so yeah, just don't worry about that. This is a cyclic assemble. I've not used it this series, but it is fairly straightforward. Basically, you, specify, you put in an empty um, schematic in here, which is two pieces of paper and a lapis in a crafting grid. Uh, you put it in, you specify your um, recipe here, and you click the tick button, and it stores it in that um, schematic. And this will auto-craft whenever it reaches three tiny piles of uranium and six uranium. So I think that just happened while I was looking at it and it gets pushed or it ejects into the thing on its right which is this chest 
again, I was running out of room, so I didn't just put one of these intermediary pipes uh, just for clarity. So I was running out of room. This is then going to get pulled and pushed into a solid canning machine, and it's going to pile up there. It's going to need a source of cans. Now that's something that we're going to be able to do with uh, our supplier pipe system. Um, we're going to be able to say, yes, yeah, store the can recipe, and then just say supply this with cans. We haven't hooked it up to logistics pipes at the moment, so this that bit that bit is still manual, but not for long. Um, then that in turn will eject to this cycle assembler which has a slightly different recipe. This is the quad fuel rod recipe. Four fuel rods, two copper plates, and two, uh, three iron plates. Again, this is something we need to get iron plates and copper plates from our logistics system. And that will then output into here, which then is ready in all our reactors down there, over here, and should then be completely automatic. The reactors are then going to extract them when they're finished with them and put them into this chest. I've got my... <sighs> Let me just uh, make sure I do that before I start looking at these. Uh, yeah, so let's just put them up in here. So 21 empty ones. So we're going to need to have another system like this. Uh, rather than try and share this system, it's just not going to work too well. You're not going to need this stage. You're not going to need this stage. You're only really going to need a thermal centrifuge. Maybe some buffers and uh, what are we going to get out of it? We're going to get iron dust and tiny piles of plutonium. Yeah, we're going to get this out of it. In fact, there's some more fuel rods. Let's dump them back in this system. Uh, there we go. And it will continue making those. So, yes, we're going to need uh, to handle these. And that, again, should be straightforward. What I'm probably going to do is here just um, have a thermal, thermal centrifuge pull the unwanted stuff out of that, that's the iron dust, and then send it all the way underneath the room and just into, again, this ender chest. Or if I'm really lazy, make another ender chest, because they're so cheap now. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess eight, for, eight, eight of them for one resonant machine frame, so not very cheap, but... And then we can just do the same thing. We're just going to create a cyclic assembler, and just... Oh, in fact, no, we don't even need a cyclic assembler. We can use something else. We can use a uh, packager, or... Anything that will just basically auto-craft nine things into one. Um, again, you could even use one of those uh, compacting drawers, but that's sort of awful. Oh, I don't have a packager. Interesting. Maybe that's factorization. Uh, it's not with this mod. But anything like that, including a cyclic assembler, just um, will make compact nine of these into one of these, and we'll just see how that can end chest or something which with plutonium i'll do this between the episodes just so again i'm not going to run over this episode i want to keep things nice and we to, to half an hour episodes so i'll do that between them and you'll see that next episode also next episode i'm just going to again briefly just show that at the start maybe and then i'm going to show you how to connect this ideally up to our logistics system um for requesting various components I think we can do it without running a huge, massive, long pipe. It doesn't really matter that it's a massive, long pipe, given that it's not going to need like real-time stuff coming in, like my normal crafting table. But at the same time, I'd like to show a method for shortening the runs. And a couple of commenters mentioned it. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, it's uh, it's pretty clever. It's sort of, it's sort of like um, using two ender chests as a proxy for a pipe run so instead of having you sort of having uh, the two ender chests connected to the system and the system just thinks they're a pipe so uh, you can do pretty much anything you like with them then so what i could do is various things like um well one i could put uh just normally just put an output for all the uranium into like an ender chest in fact is that is that the ender chest i set up for it it might actually be Something I'll put over here. Yeah, it is. That's the end of the chest for uranium. I just need to put um, uh, an exporter uh, on that to make everything work. Uh, but even without that, I could use that then end of the chest to um, that end of the chest method. I'm going to show you next episode to link all the parts of the system up. So yeah, speeding up the, the network is very very nice. So all that we can do need to do now is where's the wall stuff? There we go. Right, we can just cover this back in. Uh, by the way, yeah, just to show you, 
behind the scenes here it's still working with the quarry um let's just have a look uh yeah so there's, there's a rail run there for the gold golden cable and then i've just got little offshoots for the mfe to keep that charged and again these cyclic assemblers need power as well and then this thing goes off to our farm like we had before uh, a couple of people have asked for a world download i will have a world download it probably will be with episode 40 just to keep things nice and round uh, let's just get rid of you have i got anything radioactive no i don't good and yeah we should end up with a stockpile of this which is very good indeed um very useful just to get rid of all of the stuff the one thing that always bugs me about covers and i don't know if anyone has any solutions for this feel free to let me know if you do um definitely in the comments because i'm very unhappy about this from my ocd point of view well not ocd but yeah from my everything you should look right point of view no connected textures <laughs> i want connected te in fact the connected textures between the covers but not between the covers and the block that they are made from and that's probably some kind of weird intermod thing that's just never going to work i wish they did i just really really wish they did uh let me know what you think uh if you know of any i mean slightly ugly yeah so i it might even be worth just because of that using a block to make the covers that doesn't have any textures because of just how odd this looks but yeah we'll sort it out one way or another anyway it's nicely contained as is um i'm not going to be able to look in the chests but uh we are able to look at all the rest of the system how many are up to now up to 22 and we should be fine so, hope you like this episode. This is just some more nuclear control stuff, really. So, we've got auto control of our reactors. We've got automatic feeding of the the new and old reactor cores. We've got a, an improved and optimized system of recyclers, and that is continuing to work. And we'll continue to work over a few days. We're up to 16 iridium more. We're going to need quite a few stacks of that iridium more for various things. Uh, uh, it's eventually going to be needed for our ME system. It's going to be needed for a bunch of other stuff, mainly Scenarium. And uh, in fact, uh, let me just make sure I order those while I finish off the episode. Um, for the, oh, I'm probably going to be out of rubber. This is the usual thing that I do when I do this. What a four advanced circuit. Oh, no, it says fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make that molecular transformer. It's going to take a million EU per scenarium piece it's going to produce so we are going to need more power what that means is um in probably next episode or the one after i'm going to have to jump up from ic2 nuclear reactors into big reactors now big reactors uh, i've said this before but the fuel rod for big reactors needs rtg fuel so as and when these this processing system produces plutonium, we can make RTG fuel from that, which is all well and good. Or we could shift UU UU matter production to do this instead. However, it's it is something like eight times slower, and I've only got like twelve or sixteen down there, something like that. So it would have only made one one and a half or two two. <laughs> well, we can only can't do a half either one or two in that same amount of time to produce RTG fuel. <clears throat> that said, um, uh, the normal big reactors I would start with, there's, there's a tiny design, but I'm not gonna go for that. The big reactors I would start with beyond that uh, is the one with five fuel rods uh, in an X pattern, like a cross, um, with uh, yeah, all the coolant around that, and then the, the block. So it would end up being seven by seven by three outside dimensions with a cross in the middle. I think that's the smallest because then when you want to expand it, all you need to do is um, you need to rework the reactor a little bit, but you can just extend the fuel rods upwards, if that makes sense. And you can you can make it up to seven by seven by seven, which will get us a decent uh, big reactor size. But because of this RTG thing, it's going to need quite a bit of... Um, <laughs> automatic stuff uh, for production of the RTG. 
um, which is frustrating. So because I've got this on the server now, hopefully I should get a lot more of that a lot quickly, a lot quicker while I'm at work or while I'm away. Uh, when I come back for the next episode, I can actually get that out to you guys as fast as I can. I want ideally the amount of time I need to pre uh, pre-production before an episode to be, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, something like that would be great. Um, yeah, could even maybe get back to, to, to daily releases if I get that fast. We will see. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the episode. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Tell me why. Uh, if you really liked it, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Greyduster. And um, mainly, as always, let me know in the comments. Discuss. Point out ob objects that I've blown up, mistaked, made a mistake, um, or could do better. Feel free. Thanks for watching.